Welcome back. My good name is Brian Sankwa and you're still hanging out with us right here on the hashtag Why in the Morning. You can always interact with us on Facebook, X, Instagram and the rest at Y254 channel. On Instagram it's underscore. Personally mine is at Brian Sankwa 101. I really liked the conversation Stephanie has had with the guys about digital and social media marketing. You know there's a place uh, uh, the guests will say you can still pay for a hashtag to trend so very soon you know. Now you know <laughs> why a lot of people trend and sometimes you have no idea idea like why is this person trending and they're turning a number one on X or whatever, uh, whichever social media platform so I think there's an interesting conversation as well but right here live in studio we're also about to get into an incredible conversation with a very powerful guest who is live with us in the studio but before I introduce her let me just uh, try to brief you about her titles and who she is she is a born-again Christian she's a beauty queen she's a PR advocate and a model preacher underline that okay and she was recently in Cambodia, right? Uh, this is a country in South Southeast Asia, I believe, right? Uh, last month, she's been crowned Universal Woman Africa. But before that, uh, she was Miss World Kenya 2022, top nine finalist as well, Miss University Kenya uh, 2020 and 2021, and Miss Technical University. She's a trailblazer. Not only has she just managed to achieve a success for herself, but she's impacting and touching lives out there. And she's right here live with us to tell us her journey, her trials, and triumphs to becoming who she is. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lynette Kenya. Karibu sana, Lynette. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you. Nice How to are you? you? Thank you. Nice to meet you too, once again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazing. Right. Yeah. So how are you feeling good. today? I feel good. Uh -huh. I feel really honored right. to be your guest today uh -huh. and to share my voice to the world. Right. Karibu sana. And I forgot, you have, an, you have a fantastic book titled Awaken. Yeah. You tell us about that later on. But uh, right up, let's get into it. How did you become all this that you are today? Until, you know, you have, you have a crown on your head. <laughs> and then you have a sachet. Is it called a sash? A or sash, a, yes. Or a sash. a sash. So how did you become all of this? And what is the story and the journey? Uh, well, my story started after high school. Right. Um, when I finished high school, I was really passionate about modeling, but it wasn't in me. People spoke it out of me right. because I, I would wear heels all right. the time, walking heels. Mm. So guys would ask me, are you a model? I'm like, no, you should try be a model. Mm. And then once I entered the Technical University of Kenya, a right. lot of people asked me to be Miss Technical University of Kenya. Right. But in first year, I was really shy. I couldn't mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. But then in my third year is when I was like, you know what, what have I got to lose? Let me just right. go ahead and try it. Right. And I won Miss Technical University of Kenya. And that is when my eyes were opened to beauty pageants right. and to the kind of platforms that they afford queens. So I just right. went right in. Right. So this is something that uh, I'd say maybe innate or intrinsically it was inborn. Mm -hmm. And maybe as a kid you always saw yourself in fashion shows. Nini, nini. Did you yeah. used to watch fashion shows while you were growing up as well? No. Oh, you never I watched? I did not see this coming. So where did the passion come from now? I don't know. I right. really don't know because I never dreamt of being um, a model. I mm -hmm. was always passionate about speaking right. and uh, hosting shows as you are. But yes. I never mm -hmm. saw modeling for me because I was not... A typical girl. I would, I would when I was little, I shaved my hair. No. So as a girl, you know, <laughs> right. guys called you a boy. A so tomboy I wasn't, is. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, a typical <laughs> beauty queen growing up. Right. So this is a surprise even to uh -huh. my parents, even right. to myself. Yeah. I think the transition is really uh, incredible. Like <laughs> from being a tomboy to all this, mm -hmm. and then now you recently also travelled abroad. Yeah. And you are crowned a universal. Woman, Woman Africa. Africa 2024. Yes. From all these competitions. Can you tell us a story of how that happened? Uh, well, last year I saw the application for Universal Woman Kenya. Right. And I was like, let me just try. You know, my dream was to be Miss World Kenya and then Miss right. World. Uh -huh. So when this came yeah. first, I saw it as an opportunity to just try it myself. Right. So I competed against other amazing ladies. Right. Then I won Universal Woman Kenya on mm -hmm. Friday, two days right. to my flight on Monday. Right. So I went to Cambodia, competed against all these other amazing queens from other countries. Right. And that is when I was crowned Universal Woman Africa. Right. It was challenging. The competition mm. was very intense. How tough and intense was it? It was very tough mm -hmm. because, I mean, you are competing against other queens from other nations. Right. So it was not just any other competition. It was the most intense I have been 
right. to SOFA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how is it meeting? Uh, maybe you can uh, share a little bit of uh, some of the misses you met. Mm -hmm. uh, how many were there and how was uh, the exchange and the relationships that you guys had? Even the conversations, because I can imagine when they're announcing you on stage, mm -hmm. you know, you're walking and they're saying you're representing Kenya yeah. and you're coming on stage. Mm. It's really a euphoric moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was quite an honor. Because mm -hmm. once you go outside the country, you are, I was not in at Kenya anymore. Right. I was Kenya. Right. So to carry a whole nation on your chest and to have people rally for you and support you is really empowering. Yeah. So I had a lot of support from back home. And the queens, they were really amazing. I made so many friends, Miss mm -hmm. Namibia, Miss Chile, right. Switzerland, Puerto Rico. They were all so amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I made a lot of friends. Right. Yeah. What were the conversations that you guys have? Because I can imagine, um, who do I admire a lot in the media? Let's say international. Uh, maybe I meet Oprah and who? Larry King, rest in peace anyways. Maybe people like Trevor Noah. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes it can be really hard to like start a conversation because maybe they're speaking a different kind of language. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some of them are not that friendly. Mm -hmm. So were they friendly to you when they, when they were, announced you? Yeah, they were very friendly. Uh -huh. Everyone was friendly. Then they wanted to know you more. And I also right. wanted to know them more. So mm -hmm. it was easy to start up conversations like, why choose Universal Woman? Right. What are you passionate about? What do you do back in your country? So there mm. were women who are really successful in their countries, and it was nice to learn so much from them. Right. Yeah. And that's what you call pageantry, right? Yes, beauty pageants. Beauty yes. pageants. So, mm. so uh, maybe you can also uh, add a little bit. What happens in there? Before you reach to a point now, uh, I understand you have something called uh, the beauty with a purpose. Yeah. It's yeah. like your cause and call for yeah. your uh, beauty contest. Yeah. Right. Maybe you can just explain to us and take us through some of the details of pageantry and then finally how do you get crowned mm. and then how how do you even get paid because mm. uh, uh, I think uh, at some point <laughs> I, I managed to interview a little Miss World Kenya yeah that is frankly not so it could have been like two years ago just mm -hmm. right here on this show mm. and then he told me his friends with Sharon Obara I know mm -hmm. you've met her yeah in yeah, the same industry so mm. uh, you can shortly tell us what happens in mm. the pageantry space mm. and is it a space anybody watching can go into and get to be like you yeah uh -huh. so pageantry is powerful it is more than what people define it to be. You know, people think of pageants as objectifying women because now we're being judged from our outward appearance. But what they don't know is pageantry is all about confidence. Can you speak? Right. Do you have an advocacy? What do you want the platform for? Right. And so they get to gauge all those things. What kind of personality do you have? Are you kind to people? Because, you know, it's all about the heart also. Right. So they don't want a queen that is harsh and inhumane and just right. supposed to be spreading love to the world. Mm -hmm. So it's all about all those things, you know. Work is very key also. You're grooming, right. you're outfit, Oh, the work is like the way. So somebody can have an awkward working style, lo and uh, yeah. oh, so it means you can be trained how to even yes, work. Yes, you are right. trained. You can have pageant coaches. All you can right. have people train uh -huh. you beforehand. You know, mm. how bad you want it right. is how bad you prepare for it. You mm. have to go all mm. out for the crown that you want because you don't get it so easily. The competition right. is always chief. Queens come in prepared. Yes. So you also have oh, you to call come in yourself prepared. queens. Yeah, we are queens. Because you guys have crowns. <laughs> yes. Do you also have kings? Because no. <laughs> yes. So kings, did you have your male counterpart as well? Uh, no, no, no. Or for, for your no competition, there's no male. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 So Just queens. Yeah. My bad, boy child. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, uh, for the previous ones that you had, maybe for the universities, you've always had a male counterpart. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I had Mr. Took. I had Mr. University, Kenya. Right. Yeah, they were all. So nice, yeah. Right. Mm. Maybe also, uh, if you can paint for us a picture, so what happens before a person finally gets crowned mm -hmm. to be called now like Universal Woman Africa? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the things and the experiences that happens in between to a point like, we are now announcing mm. the winner is mm. Sankoa, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens? So every pageant is different, but mm -hmm. there are things that are similar. Like the boot camp, for instance, is for the judges to get to know the, l the ladies. Right. You know, we all come from different places. We are strangers to them, and they can't mm. just come and say, Sakwa, you're the king. Mm. So they take us through the boot camp to study us, to gauge us, to know us. Right. There's always an indoor interview session, closed yes. door, yeah. uh, so where they ask you questions just to tick your mind, you know, why do you yes. want to win this crown? What will you do once you win this crown? Yes. Why should we pick you over the other ladies? Right. So, you know, they get, they get to gauge the different queens and then from there they can crown you. We also have different segments. Right. For the Universal Woman, we had um, a sportswear 
Right. We had a dinner well, mm -hmm. then there's a question and answer, and then finally you go to the crowning yeah. ceremonial. Right. Mm -hmm. So you pass through several levels before you finally yes. get to Yes. And so it means that if you guys are 10, probably the finalists are like five. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what would make these other five be disqualified from reaching the top finalists? Um, the walk. Right. The evening gown. Was it beautiful? How did you oh. walk in it? You know, mm -hmm. you can have an amazing evening gown, but you do not walk nicely in it. You don't, you don't own it. Right. It's the evening gown that is owning you. Mm -hmm. So, how is your smile? How is your posture? How is your confidence? How is your stage presence? Mm. That's what they look at That's when intense. the ladies are walking in. Intense details yeah, then right there. cut from 10 to 5. Right. Yeah. Oh, I can only imagine now when they're cutting people off, they're like, step on the right, <laughs> step on the left. Yeah. It's usually an intense moment, right? Very intense. You're like, I hope I make it. Right. Yeah. But glad you made it. And also, uh, not only in your space, you have something like that I've mentioned, mm -hmm. a beauty with... Is it Beauty with a Pampas? Beauty with a Pampas, yeah. Right, that is like your pageantry call. Yes. So what was yours that made you rise to these levels? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mine has been mental health. Mm -hmm. And that is not because it is timely and relevant, but I too went through it. I've been through depression in 2019 before I started the pageantry journey. Right. So I, was, I went through depression. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was so bad and so severe that I was almost suicidal. I contemplated suicide so many times and I nearly felt, felt like giving up in life because the season that I was in was really dark. But having overcome that and become who I am, yeah. that taught me that really nothing is that permanent in life. You know, it doesn't right. matter what you go through. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I use these platforms because right. they give you such a powerful platform to influence people and to influence minds. Right. So I use this platform to advocate for, for it, to show right. others, you know, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Right. There's always a better chapter for you ahead. Right. Yeah. And, you know, through that as well, you manage to even not only just uh, impact other people outside there, but you're even healing yourself through that as yeah. you're reaching out and even sharing your story the way yeah. you're doing right here live on TV. Mm. You're healing. You might yeah. not know it, but yes, eventually the more you share your story, the more that burden gets lifted. True. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's mm. very true. Yeah. Because... What was the darkest season of my life now has become mm -hmm. the best thing that ever happened to me. Right. And for you to just stand before people and share. I didn't know how big yes. pageantry mm -hmm. platform was until I right. started sharing my stories with people. As Miss Technical University of Kenya, right. then you'd find girls come to you, boys come, guys come to you and they're like, you know, thank you for your story. I right. felt like giving up, but now you have empowered me to keep on going. Right. So that really gave me the zeal to continue, to get bigger platforms, to get bigger influence. Yeah. So from Miss Took to Miss University, now you can influence other people across all universities. Right. And now with this African title, I can influence the continent right. against suicide. Yeah. Right. That's really impeccable. And that's a powerful cause. Mm -hmm. Actually, now that you mentioned suicide, I, I was just checking an update here that says, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this, is a, this is a UK one. It yeah. talks about uh, male suicide statistics. It says uh, 4,639 men took their own lives, that is, in 2020. Mm -hmm. This is... Uh, according to uh, a site called Pri Priori. Mm -hmm. It talks about uh, the highest number of suicides actually are for the males, from yeah. the males. Uh, it includes 74% of all suicides in the UK mm. involving men. And then they're talking about the rate of suicide in men uh, goes from 15.4%, that is per 100,000, and in over three times higher. Mm. So they're also quoting the age, they're saying men between 45 and 64 have the highest rate of suicide yeah. by age 20. So it means uh, if you're a Gen Z out there and you're feeling suicidal, it means that you know you need to either get into psychosocial help mm -hmm. or reach out to somebody who's supportive. Mm -hmm. I don't know for you, how did you bounce back from that dark season and mm -hmm. that dark space? Mm -hmm. Well, that is where my model preacher was bathed. Right. Because unlike most people, you know, my overcoming was not normal and natural. Right. So in that darkest point is when I actually had God speak to me for the first time. Right. So I was really depressed and I had this voice tell me, you know, Lynette, I have a plan for you. Right. I have not brought you this far just to leave you halfway. Yes. I didn't know it was God speaking. You know, I was not that spiritual back then. So I was like, right. what is this? I didn't know that's mm. an actual verse. Right. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Right. So I kept hearing that voice tell me, I have a plan for you. Trust me. 
then I remember answering back to that voice, what plans though? I am yeah. homeless, I am a school dropout. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what do you mean you have plans? Because nothing seems prosperous about my life right now. Right. But the voice kept saying, and I had God say, you know, just trust me, I have yeah. a plan. Mm -hmm. And that is when I was like, you know what? If you think you can turn my life around, yeah. be my guest. Right. And he did. So mm -hmm. for me, it has been a spiritual journey. Right. And that is what I try to do whenever I go to this school outreaches yes. through my platform Awaken. Right. It's to show people that we are not alone right. because I did not overcome it alone. You know, mm -hmm. I can't tell you that I sat down, I breathed, meditated, wrote a gratitude journal. It mm. was all spiritual. Like yes. just knowing that you are a child of God, that you come from somewhere. Yes. and you are headed somewhere, right. that there is one who actually has a plan for you, we are not here by chance, mm. has made my life worthwhile. And that is the kind of hope I try to spread. Right. Oh, that's deep inspirational. <laughs> yeah. I, I think rarely do we get uh, uh, people in the public space, even in the public domain, who are as passionate with Christ as you are mm -hmm. in, in your walk of Christ. And now that you have uh, this book called Awaken, mm -hmm. uh, you've combined here some interesting details as well. So I think it's you're, you're really different and unique mm -hmm. as compared to like many other people. They get, you know, number one, especially for the youth, uh, it's alcohol or getting to drink something or yeah. smoking something. Yeah. And that actually derails you even more. It's like you get even deeper and deeper. Yeah. You get sucked into the dark space even more as yeah. compared to like, you know, for you, you chose Christ and mm -hmm. it's been amazing for you, right? Yeah, it has been amazing. And he chose me. I had no idea right. of him. Mm -hmm. I grew up in church, but it was not as it is right now. Yes. So for him to just pick me up, I feel always indebted. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people have committed suicide. I would right. have made the statistic, but right. he chose to use me as a voice to empower others. So I do it as a responsibility. Like I've been given that baton, you know, Right. I showed you light, show others the same light. So yeah. Right. Mm. Really incredible. Mm. Now, uh, through this book, Awaken, uh, when did you first get it published? I published it uh, last year, 2023 September. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Also, what is the message in this book? For example, for uh, somebody who's watching right now mm -hmm. and later on they want to read it and yeah. uh, get to just get uh, some of the, you know, tidbits of wisdom or nuggets in the book, yeah. uh, what should they expect from this book? Okay, so Awaken. the book is titled Awaken. Yes. Know who you are, whose you are, and the truth spoken about, about you. you. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Awaken was inspired from Hosea 4 6. Right. Uh, it says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I remember thinking, first of all, the verse came to me. I did not know it was a scripture. I kept hearing my people perish for lack of knowledge. Right. And I'm like, what is this? Mm -hmm. I went and Googled that statement. I found that it was a scripture. Right. About that time is when I was now mistook going to Miss University Kenya. So I was mm -hmm. still new in this journey. Mm -hmm. So I remember God telling me, you know, you nearly committed suicide because you lacked knowledge and understanding Ooh, of man. who you are, of whose you are, and right. of what I had spoken about you. That's a deep one. Yeah, because the only statement that changed my life is, Lynette, I have a plan for you, a scripture, for mm -hmm. I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah. So I would have committed suicide, not because God does not have great plans for me, but because I did not know, I did not know him, and I did not know what the word says. Right. So ever since then, I soaked myself into the word. You know, what does the word say? What more has been written concerning me? Right. And you find that the challenges that we go through, especially in mental health, right. the hardships we go through, if we do not know what God has spoken about us, if we do not know who we are to him yeah. and who he is as our father, Yes. Then we end up depressed and suicidal. Right. And yet he has dictated all those things. As, as they read the book, they will find out that I've written about all these things, like a worryless life. You know, we've yeah. been commanded not to worry, right. not to be anxious about anything. All right. Actually, in chapter three, mm -hmm. hey, I think this one caught my attention. Mm -hmm. mm, you're talking about, uh, so <laughs> you're talking about love. Yeah. Uh, I believe this is Christ's love mm -hmm. before you get into uh, your how you're reaching out to the community. Mm -hmm. You said, quote in quote, I thought that love is when you marry a handsome prince and <laughs> live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. I thought love was a smooth journey. And that's when we fell, that's when we fell in love. We'd mm -hmm. automatically have a good life with mm -hmm. a little experience of heart to the point my outlook on what love is has completely changed. Mm -hmm. 
this is a great revelation. So yeah. what changed and, and what was the revelation about love? Mm. For me, it was uh, the scripture that I quoted there, that love is kind, love mm -hmm. is this, love it does not boast, keeps no record of wrong. Right. And to realize even in our own personal relationships, our families, our community, our jobs, our workplaces, right. uh, there are a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. And for you to live with one another in harmony, you have to understand what love is. You know, don't mm -hmm. just say, I love my family. Right. Do you stay there when it gets tough? You know, do you forgive them when they fall because no one is perfect? Are you right. kind to mm -hmm. them also to yourself? Because love has to go all around. Yeah, love with God, <laughs> love with your family, yeah. love with yourself, you know. Yeah. You can be nice to other people, but are you nice to yourself? Are you kind? Mm. You mm. know, once you make a mistake, are you like, oh, I knew you would be like this? Or are you, mm. it's okay. You hold yourself Everyone hostage. Falls. Yeah, you know, you know things that pick done. yourself back up like you right. got this. You know, you should also show that love to yourself. Right. Mm. Really fantastic. Now, when you talk about pageantry and community service, it's all about sometimes interacting, reaching out to the, you know, uh, let's say, I don't want to use the, uh, the word underdog. Let's say reaching out to the minority, so people through your course of action. Yeah. So how do you reach out to the community, mm -hmm. especially where you stay mm -hmm. and also where you serve at church? Mm -hmm. And maybe what are some of the interactions that you guys have, mm -hmm. also the conversations and the projects that you push in mm -hmm. the community out there? Mm -hmm. So I think for different queens, there are different causes. For me, it's mental health, mm -hmm. and I've told you why. I'm right. really passionate about that. But yes, I've tried all these other things like tree planting because of climate change right. and speaking about all these other advocacies. But that is my main mental mm. health and ensuring I eradicate the number of suicide deaths that we have. Right. So I do that through my platform called Awaken with Lynette Kenya. Right. So now I've started going to high schools, going to primary schools because I, I saw the other day like a nine-year-old committed suicide and you'd wonder, you'd wonder right. what is, you know, depressing a nine-year-old. Nine but yeah. these kids are going through so much mm. and they need someone to speak to them, you know, a right. face, a figure they can look up to. And Homelessness you know. is big in Nairobi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, street mm. children, mm. you know, everywhere without fathers, mothers. Yeah. Right. And for them, looking and comparing their lives to those who are stable and from good backgrounds, yeah. they may wonder, you know, will I be anything in life? Am mm. I significant? Like, why do, why am I going through this? Right. And I try to shape them through their own lives that, you know, God gives the toughest battles to his toughest soldiers. Yeah. If he has allowed you to go through that, it is because he knows he has increased you enough to go through it, overcome it, and empower others to go through it. Right. And I thank God I was homeless because now I know how it feels yeah. like. You can relate so to the situation I can relate outside. to them and I know uh -huh. that you can pull yourself from that. Right. In, it may take some time, but it's mm. possible. Right. So mine is to just empower them with right. words, to heal them with words, and to yeah. show them that yeah. it's more for them. Yeah. Interesting. Do you also hold like a group uh, meetups where you reach out, uh, you do book signing, mm -hmm. or maybe uh, you hold you know, the youth conferences and mm -hmm. summits where mm -hmm. like you meet a bunch of young people or a group of young people and then you get to discuss it on certain topics as well and mm -hmm. maybe get to provide possible solution. And has it been successful and how's the feedback so far? Mm -hmm. So I introduced uh, a an close-knit group. It's called yeah. Awakened Circles. So awaken, awaken circles. Awaken okay. circles, yes. Uh -huh. So that is where we get to sit down around one another and just share what we are going through. Oh, because right. you find what is com making people commit suicide is the isolation. Mm -hmm. You know, they choose to deal with their troubles by themselves. Mm -hmm. But in Awaken Circles, it's a safe space, like calm talk. Mm -hmm. And then we open our hearts to one another, our lives to one another, and we use our own experiences to empower others also. Right. Like, because I've come to realize nothing in life is new. Mm. Nothing. What I went through, someone has gone through. Has been through it. And that yeah. someone, actually, one that I know of is Steve Harvey. Right. You know, ah, when I was homeless. He's my, one of my faves. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was homeless, I saw a clip from Mr. Harvey speaking of how he was homeless for three years, slept in the right, car for three years. In car. You right. know, he was this lowly person from rags to riches. Right. And that empowered me. Mm -hmm. So that is what I try to do in Awakened Circle, to tell people, you know, there's something you have overcome. Right. Share your story. Help right. someone else overcome that mm -hmm. thing. So, so far it has been successful. I'm still doing it across high schools and right. universities. So I'm still trying to penetrate into that space. Mm -hmm. But that is the kind of vision I have to just make people speak up and to help others also empower others with their own stories. And don't right. be ashamed of your story. Right. Your testimony can be someone else's breakthrough. Right. Like Steve Harvey's 
story was for me, you know, my story has been a breakthrough for other people. So I encourage right. others to also rise up and right. share their testimonies, yeah. Right. Because very we overcome by the word of our testimonies. Ooh, yeah. Very inspiring, very inspiring. But also, uh, I believe for you to achieve all that, you need support. I don't know if you also get support from the Universal Woman franchise mm -hmm. as well. Uh, maybe you can also share who are your biggest supporters. Mm -hmm. And also maybe if, do people partner with you and I'm also trying to also imagine like for example um, we you know in our Kenya when you look at uh, the structures of our SMEs these are small and medium term enterprises businesses are really struggling I remember there's a guest I interviewed here Akasema oh, he was telling me that if you want your business to succeed please don't borrow money from a bank to start a business from scratch at least maybe uh, serve mm -hmm. but also my question was how do you serve and you've not been having the money mm -hmm. so the challenge is how do i get the support so yeah. that i get to sustain myself mm -hmm. for my business to be successful mm -hmm. and also now throwing it back to you and what you do in terms of community service yeah. how do you get the support and mm -hmm. who believes in you that mm -hmm. pours into you so that mm -hmm. you pour into others out there yeah uh, first of all i thank god for my parents they are yeah. my number one cheerleaders because it, it matters to have people that see your vision even when they don't see it and just support it even when it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So for the book launch, I had my parents come in, right. my friends at church come in, my bishop is my number one fan also. Right. <laughs> He's always supporting me every single dream and vision that I have. I tell him and he shows me how to do it, how to go about it, and he supports me. Mm -hmm. I come from a very loving church, restoration. Right. There is nothing that I have not told them that they haven't done for me. You know, when I right. went to Miss University Kenya, mm -hmm. I was lacking in terms of finances. You know, I had to have this amount of money to compete right. and get my outfits. I went to church. Right. Like, guys, this is what I'm doing. And guys came in, you know, I'll buy you your yeah. shoe. I will do this. I will do this. Yes. So for me, it has been a God journey. As in yeah. putting God first pays mm -hmm. because he moves people to support you. Ooh, it has not powerful. been my <laughs> journey. I have never been alone. Yes. Every single pageant has had its own group of people right. just supporting me, running me for, for no reason. You, you're like, why are they so supportive? Yes. But it is the hand of God just moving through people. Right. Because I always hear this, you know, you'll never see God in person like this. But yes. you'll see him through, through people. people. And what so they he do. always comes in through people, you know, right. I get support. My franchise manager was supportive enough to take me to Cambodia. Right. And uh, support me in terms of grooming. Yes. She was there with me throughout the period, so it was nice to have her there. Right. Yeah, so it is nice. I always have support here. Right. It's, it's really interesting, you know, you're talking of support because also when you look at, you know, people who have a dream like you, it's a dream and a vision of yeah. becoming who you are. Mm -hmm. There's first of all people who are struggling to just get someone to believe in them. First mm -hmm. of all, just finding someone who can see your talent mm -hmm. and your gift. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you push on your own. <laughs> I think it was yesterday I was reading a quote that said, sometimes God lets you to push on your own, mm -hmm. fail. Mm -hmm. And then finally you get to learn how to let him push it for you. Yeah. And through that, like you said, that's when like, somebody just pops up and says, you know, mm -hmm. I recognize your gift and I'm ready to stand with you. Yeah. That's not something that's so small. That's mm -hmm. a big breakthrough. A and big I, I believe people <laughs> should take it seriously. Yeah. Because sometimes you could be pushing on your own and you're not getting anywhere. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh -huh. But you also have to also believe in yourself. Right. Because people don't support anything that Absolutely. they don't see a future for. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to believe it bad that they're like, she is so stubborn about this. Maybe there's something. Right. Because... I can't say that my parents were in for it, pop. Yeah. That oh, was there was a little bit of friction yeah, at first. Yeah, there was like, <laughs> what are you doing? You know, you have to go this path. And I'm like, no, I want to go this path. Is it because so you you're studying be a different uh, course in university? Yes, I was doing land administration in university. Landed administration. Yes. Totally different. to public relations. Right. And that uh -huh. switch was not an easy one because, you know, my parents had this vision. Right. Then once I grew up, I saw this vision for myself. So you have uh -huh. to sometimes be stubborn right. for your dreams. But God's stubborn. God's stubborn, yes. <laughs> not the, the rebellious word. stubborn. God's stubborn, yeah. You just have to believe in yourself and pray for them. Because right. I remember praying like, God, I know you've put this in me. So yes. please put it in them. Or mm. at least give them the grace to support me, even if it doesn't make sense for them. Right. And I saw that happen. So now they support me. Mm -hmm. Knowing not what I am doing, right. but they are always there. You know, they took me to the airport. They did all these amazing things right. just to show that they are with me. Yeah, and that is uh, the most priceless thing ever. 
in the world. Yeah. Having parental support, True. them believing in who you are and what you want as a kid, it's it, it, people it's underestimate it that it's a, it's a big breakthrough. It's a big breakthrough. Because the times, this uh -huh. journey is tough. Being a pageant right. queen is tough. You sometimes have self-doubt, you know, do I have what it takes? Mm -hmm. Let you see my mom come tell me, you know, yeah, you do. You're very beautiful. Go mm -hmm. for it. Like, they mm -hmm. are empowering you when I am down. Right. It's nice to have those voices that empower you. Because I'm not always 100% like, I got this. Mm -hmm. There are days I need someone to tell me, you got this. Like, right. you know, God has got your back. Right. So to surround yourself with such voices of hope is really yeah. powerful when you are chasing a dream. Right, really yeah. incredible. Now, when you announced as the Universal Woman Africa 2024, mm -hmm. how did they react? <laughs> Who, my parents? Yes. They were happy. <laughs> they were overjoyed. They were so happy. They, were, they couldn't I mean, wait for uh, me to be back because right. I was announced in Cambodia and I had like two more days to come back to Kenya. Right. So they were so happy. Of course, the goal was to win the international crown. Right. So they called me like, I know you wanted to win the international one, but you know, God has still been faithful. You are Miss Africa. Like that's a big win for you. Right. Because they thought I was crushed or disappointed in myself or something. So they were trying to empower me. Right. But I was really happy. So mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and the friends around you, and uh, what do they my say? My friends were happy. Mm -hmm. My church went crazy. Ballistic. Like they it just were happy. This is amazing. I, I came yeah. in, you think of won the international crown. Like yeah. they were so like Miss supportive. World. <laughs> when I was Miss in World Cambodia, yeah, right. they prayed for me. Right. It's nice. I come from a very nice community yes. of God. Yeah. So I right. really thank God for them. Right. They um, were um, so happy. Like, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Now, as we move away from that, also, when you look at what you do professionally, mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people who are watching, especially beautiful ladies, young, beautiful ladies like you yeah. who want to get into this space and get to, you know, go through the successes. It has not been easy. It has not been a, it, it has not been a walk in the park yeah. from the story you, you've just shared. Mm -hmm. But maybe uh, what could they, where could they start from? Mm -hmm. well, how, how does it start? Mm -hmm. So I'd say, I'd say start from where you are. For mm -hmm. me, this big dream that is big right now started from something simple as the Technical University of Kenya. Right. I took a leap on that platform, Miss Technical University of Kenya. So if you are passionate about pageantry, just start from your campus, start from your college, start from your high school. And then once you get out here, apply. They are everywhere. Oh, and there's thank competitions God for social announced. media. Yeah, oh, right, they yeah. are always like right now. Miss Universe Kenya is coming up. Right. Miss World Kenya is coming up. Oh, Miss Universe and Miss World is totally different. Totally different. Oh, what yeah. is the difference, Miss World and Miss Universe? Um, they are alike in some way, but different in some way, mm -hmm. like how they are run, the owners, the organization. Like you'd right. see, Miss World is big on beauty with a purpose, head-to-head -head challenges, right. sports challenges. Mm -hmm. While Miss Universe, on the other hand, is all about gowns, evening mm -hmm. gown, and all that. Yeah, so they are different in some sort. Right. Yeah. So that's what like sets the difference. So it, it's, it's possible for anyone to venture into any of them. And you can, yeah. Get to you just have to know what are you passionate about. Right. Because there are queens who are just Miss Wild fanatics, right. and there are queens that are just Miss Universe fanatics, and mm -hmm. Universal Woman now is coming up also. Right. So there are so many. There's Miss Tourism. There's Miss Kajado. There's Miss Your County, where you come from. Right. There is um, all these pageants. Mm -hmm. You know, they should just start from somewhere. Believe right. in yourself. Apply. Mm -hmm. Fail. Mm -hmm. Do another. Uh, do not be afraid to fail. Do not be afraid. Because <laughs> you know, a lot of people want to be successful, but they don't want to fail. You Actually, the <laughs> they, somebody said uh, the core ingredient of success is failure. Yeah. You yeah. Know, you fail severally. Mm -hmm. You will definitely succeed. Yeah. It shows you are on the right track to success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You and don't be some, afraid. You yeah. lose some. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. Because I remember, and don't listen to people. Right. A lot of people told me that I will not make it for Miss Wild Kenya. Why? Kenya. Were they telling you that? Because I'm short. Shut Typically, up. What do you mean? I don't know whether it's true. I don't see you short. I know. In fact, you are taller than me when we came short. in. <laughs> <laughs> but right. in pageant, um, I'm not tall uh -huh. as the Miss Wild candidates are. Oh, there's a certain standard. I don't know if that's standard. true or it's a myth. I really don't All know. Right. Only what, what is the standard was, height for um, competitions? Maybe five, six, five, seven. Right. I'm five, that's three. A so bit, anyone that's that a is a five, taller. three, please. Yeah. You guys, there is hope for you. Mm. So I was told that I will never make it because I'm short, because they pick five, six and above and all that. But mm. I tried. I was like, let them reject me, not yeah. you guys reject. And how did that make you feel? Because also, Pia, how you process rejection in any, actually in any profession, if you want to be a star mm. in anything, 
rejection and sabotage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. ready. You yeah. can't be a star without those. Yeah. So how do you process a rejection or when you're being told a no? Because mm -hmm. uh, at some point, you know, when somebody tells you a no, you're like, if this is my dream, don't sabotage it. Mm -hmm. But you have to go through that so yeah. that you succeed in the next one. Yeah. How did you process rejection and being told, no, nope, you can't? Mm. So you know, the good thing about putting yourself out there is that they see you. So when right. I applied for Miss World, I applied to get, hoping to get a no, or at right. least a boot camp. But right. they saw me and they loved me. And by mm -hmm. the grace of God, I got favor before their eyes. Because not only did I make it to the boot camp that I was told I would never make it to, but I made it to the finalist. Ooh. And even to the top nine finalists. I what was a the comeback. shortest <laughs> top nine finalist top nine in finalists. that year. Yeah. That was a comeback to your enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, you've got to go for it. If people mm -hmm. tell you you will not make it, you know, right. that's them speaking of their fears to you. Right, telling, projecting. You know, yeah, projecting mm -hmm. their fears to you. But you have to go. Go, right. get a no, try again. Right. Get a no, try again. Mm. And, you know, if you always put God first, he'll always go ahead of you. Right. Because I remember praying about it, it was like, I know, mm -hmm. I have seen, they right. don't pick a mm -hmm. short girl like me. Right. But please, God, go before me, because I am more than my heart. I mean, you could have made me taller, but you chose me to be how I am. Right. Maybe it is to show other people that it is possible. Right. So for me to go there and have, you know, things go as they went, you know, that was just a showcase of how your dreams, they are right. really possible if you are stubborn about them. Right. Yeah, so I tell people, never listen to the naysayers. And now Arnold she says that. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you yes. know him? Yeah, oh, a big he fan. He says a that big all fan. the time, do not listen right. to the naysayers. Right. And it's very true. Yeah, and, and Alia, the R&B star, rest in peace, there's, a, there's one of her songs, she says, at first you don't succeed, dance yourself and try again mm -hmm. and again and again. Because yeah. it's never easy mm -hmm. to get on top of yeah. any. Mm. any career, yeah. any profession, mm -hmm. you must dust yourself again. And I, and I love the fact that, you know, you have that passion and that vehemence of, mm -hmm. you know, preaching to people and telling them, and as much as you are the beauty queen that you are, mm. trust me, it's not that easy. It's not and, that easy. And a lot of people might underestimate that. Yeah. Mm. And you always learn something from everything if you're open to. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in Miss World Kenya, there's a day I preached. So we had right. morning devotions mm -hmm. and they would pick a queen to preach. You know, every day there's someone preaching. So on this day, I remember speaking to them. I'm like, you know, we are here chasing one crown. Mm -hmm. Only one girl would win. But right. we were there at that season for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not by sheer chance that we were there. That slot, that particular group of people. And I remember telling them, you know, no matter what happens, if you don't win the crown, ensure you leave out here with something because there's something that God wanted you to learn. Right. And I'm so grateful because of that platform, that book was born. Awaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now from that platform, I knew and I got to understand what I have, that I actually have a voice right. for this generation. It, it empowered me to have this book. Right. So had I not tried to be a Miss World Kenya, then uh, there would be no Awaken. Right. Yeah. Yeah, let's close that chapter and now let's switch gears to now your profession and the nitty gritties of it. Because I understand now you must be fashionable. Uh -huh. Even what you're wearing, this gown that you're wearing, is mm -hmm. has a sense of fashion. Mm -hmm. So that means you have, um, I'd say you have maybe like a, a sort of like a shade mm -hmm. or a certain type of fashion sense mm -hmm. for you to be considered into this kind of space. Mm -hmm. yeah, so maybe what is the difference now between, because uh, I hear somebody says I'm a fashion model, I'm going to say I'm a runway model. Mm -hmm. What is the difference and what is that? Mm -hmm. So pageantry is all about platforms that you use to give back to the society. Right. We are humanitarian kind right. of people. Mm -hmm. uh, fashion show, you have commercial models, you have runway models, you right. know, just high fashion. Right. They are showcasing their outfits. Mm -hmm. So that is the distinction between the two. We are more, we, are, we always showcase ourselves. Right. As a pageant queen, it is you they want to see, not just the outfit. You know, what kind of person are you? So it's always good to always look good. Because right. you are a mentor to young girls. You, ha yeah. you have to showcase the best that they should un admire. Right. So I always try to look good, even not just for my sake, but for those who are looking up to me. You know, yeah. What kind of dress code am I wearing? What is it saying? You know, yeah. what oh, so kind it's a of specific sense of fashion that you must maintain. I it's like a brand. Your values right. as a person, because mm -hmm. we are all different. If you look at us, we are all different queens. So mm -hmm. what kind of a person are you? Try to show that through your outfits. 
Right. So it's not particular like you have to be like this. No. Just who you are, show right. it, look good. In short, you're expressing you yourself through Ex in yes. your dress code. I remember, yeah. rest in peace, there's one of my very powerful guests was here, mm. and it was Albert Sege. He passed on last year, mm. but one, I believe, last year, but one. He, when I was speaking to him, he told me, uh, he's, he was also a fashion enthusiast. He was mm -hmm. telling me that, you know, when you dress good, you feel good and yeah. people see it and you emit it out there. People <laughs> notice you very fast when you're dress, well dressed. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace, mm. bro. You also feel yeah. good when you're well dressed. You know, you mm. carry yourself with this confidence yes. when you feel you are looking good. Even when you're going for a job, yeah. or when you dress nicely in an interview, the, the managers or the bosses can tell, the mm -hmm. panel can tell, you know, this, yep. this, this lady is up to the task. Mm -hmm. uh, because they say you're, you're addressed according to the way you are dressed <laughs> that's very true uh-huh that's very true yeah right now when you when you when you talk about fashion because i believe like there's so many trends in there as well um <laughs> maybe let me just ask what would you consider to be a no-no for let, 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 let me try to imagine maybe a person who works and a nine to five let's say um a receptionist a receptionist can be a little bit casual but i believe it also depends with the company for example the the front end person who sits there at the front end desk mm -hmm. uh, maybe what should they consider in terms of their dress code mm -hmm. or oh, let me also say our cameraman right here in studio do, mm -hmm. do, should they have a certain sense of dress code mm -hmm. depending on maybe if the company has uniforms or not mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. maybe for a person now who works in an official space mm. Mm -hmm. i think okay let me s use the cameraman they yeah. are free to choose what they want mm -hmm. but just let it be presentable right. you know you are hosting guests all manner of guests in here how right. do you want them to take you how do you want them to carry you that right. is very important because you know you just can't come randomly you know someone with crocs to work yeah people <laughs> will not take your brand gen z's want to come with crocs to work yeah they will <laughs> and it's crocs and socks mm -hmm. and as a right. person as as a person, as a cameraman, right. you're not just the cameraman, you are Y254. Yeah, if people look at you, they see the whole brand. Mm -hmm. So you have to also represent that brand. You know, If you are random, they will think the whole brand is random mm -hmm. and they will not take you seriously. Right. But if you look a bit together, right. they carry well your kept. brand with an esteem. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important for you and also for the brand you represent. Yeah. But kuna kuna story na color coordinating. There used to be uh, so uh, there's a meme that said we have yellow, then we have red, this is doing a cafe like a country mm -hmm. But also I think it's also a skill because mm -hmm. uh, I believe you must really be having a, a very powerful sense of color coordination. Yeah. Because you can't just put yellow and red and blue and purple mm -hmm. and sh red shoes, white uh, trouser, mm. blue something on top, mm -hmm. and then maybe a, a, a green cap. Because mm -hmm. that's a whole flag. Mm -hmm. right? So maybe you, you, you d in your space, in your profession, do you guys uh, get trained on maybe color coordination, outfit coordination? Yes. When you're picking an ensemble for an event, mm. do you guys get through that as well? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we do. We have training for such, uh -huh. grooming and everything. So they tell you what goes best with what. Mm -hmm. So it's important for you as a queen, if you have no idea, no, you know, get those classes. And the good thing nowadays, we have everything online. So you can just go ahead and Google on YouTube, on anywhere, right. just try to know what color goes best with what. Everything nowadays is just online, yeah. Right. So you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, and fashion is also a profession because uh, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people, even th some that we've interviewed here, our guests as well. Uh, somebody is a fashion expert mm -hmm. or, or a fashion, uh, this is called fashion connoisseur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people who give uh, expertise opinion on a dress code. I've seen uh, events, international events like Met Gala where, you know, they're having all those elite celebs who are coming to showcase the way yeah. they're dressed, their mm -hmm. outfits. And it's commercially talked about and it's sponsored by some of these huge brands. True. Also m reminding me of what Iliud Kipchoge and Faith keep your gun war at the Nike event that mm -hmm. happened uh, the previous week and mm -hmm. people are like so says the outfits in Zakanya what is Taman Zanani <laughs> <laughs> but it was a promotion by Adidas because of the I think Olympics coming mm -hmm. up in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Paris yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah, wh what's your view on that on commercial uh, fashion uh, business mm -hmm. yeah I think it's good and they try to use this big galas you know to showcase as fashion designers to showcase the outfits right. for me i'm a model i'm not more of a designer so right. i don't design outfits and all that oh you're designed for <laughs> yes i'm designed for right so what i do is partner with those fashion designers you know uh -huh. maybe they have these outfits they want taken out there so i wear them have photo shoots with them and just put their brand out there like influence people too to yeah. know of what they produce 
Right. So that is what I do as a model. But Fashion influencer, yes. in other words. Yeah. Right. But this is the most important question, by the way. Do you get paid when you become all this? Because mm -hmm. I believe somebody is watching back at home and I say, hey, eh, Sasa, you may go through, you've won Universal Women Africa, mm -hmm. you've had this other different contest that led you to where you mm -hmm. are today. Mm -hmm. Is there any monetary compensation or any monetary benefits along the journey mm -hmm. that if somebody gets to participate, mm -hmm. even as a king, because I love the fact that you may say it's queens and kings, kings right? Yes. Is there financial benefits? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. most, uh, most competitions have a cash prize for uh -huh. the winner. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, as Universal Woman Kenya, the cash prize was 150000 mm -hmm. As Universal Woman Africa, it is not yes, yet disclosed. Mm -hmm. right. But every single pageant has a, ha a cash prize. Right. So for, them, for some make it known out there. Mm -hmm. Others, they do not announce it to the world. Like the likes of maybe Miss World, Miss Universe. You do not know what is what. But like Miss Wild Kenya, the winner last year, but one went home with two fifty thousand. Right. Number two, number three, there was a cash prize for them too. So yeah, different pageants give a different amount of money. Right. So you have to just go ahead, research about them. You know, know what do they give? Right. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Apply. If it's right. not, try another one because there are so many. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for a person from the interiors, Kule uh, Western, mm -hmm. Bondo, money? Mm -hmm. For a girl who's in there, Kosha, go konza Adahana slippers. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe slippers to them is like the latest version of Nikes. Yeah. You know, is it possible for that young girl to grow up and become like you? And now you're on TV, you've even traveled abroad and had all these achievements. Mm. Is mm. it possible for them? Mm. Is it possible? Yeah, I believe it's possible. Mm -hmm. I really believe it's possible. And I pray that the right opportunities come their way. Right. Because you realize sometimes where you are limits you. You may be talented, but you are not in a space where you can pursue that talent. Yes. So for me, exactly. Um, now what I'm trying to do as Universal Woman Africa is to empower those girls yes. who are from those rural places where they, they cannot yes. access their talents and better training. Yes. So what I want to start is a training that can really go into such spaces and empower those girls to also take up their spaces yeah. and their positions, yeah. Right, uh, Derek here says, do you always want to be good looking for you to make it? And what about for the men? What do they consider? <laughs> Interesting <laughs> question. <laughs> oh, that's right. a nice question. Yeah, you have to always look good. I mm -hmm. mean, you are a queen. You are wearing a whole crown right. and a whole sash. This is your physique. So your physique matters. Yes. So it means there's people who can't good. make it due. Surai and Dani na competition. Ama, what do you say about that part? <laughs> Let no one tell you that you are not beautiful. Right. Because we are all beautifully and wonderfully made in our own different ways. Mm -hmm. So for some, your beauty is represented. For some, you have to be the first one to represent others in such a sphere. Right. Like for Zozi, Zozi Bini Tunzi was Miss Universe 2019. Right. She was a black girl with right. a short hair competing yeah. against whites with all this amazing long hair but right. she went into a space where she was told she was not maybe good enough right. you know people Even asked her skin her, color will she's a little yeah. bit uh, will, you have, say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. will you have a wig on you know but she was like i love my hair why should i do that you know right. then that means that my hair is not beautiful and it is right. so for her she went there and she sh she represented other ladies you know like me Right. So for you, if you do not see someone that looks like you, be that mm -hmm. first person to advocate for it and make others, you know, know that mm -hmm. there is a space for people who are like you. Exactly. Because it's not limited to certain people. Mm -hmm. Just go for it. Show them that you deserve it. Yes. And they will pick you. No, actually, that's confidence, gangster 101. Yeah. <laughs> now we have to go, leader. We have actually come to the end. So um, I want you to reach out to. Um, I love what uh, Cabinet Secretary for Sports, Youth Affairs, Sports and Arts, that is uh, Babu Namamba, is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, he reaches out and supports people like you a lot. So yeah. if you were to present to him a course right now, and if at some point he gets to watch this interview, mm. he might watch anyways, mm. uh, what would you present to him? And how would you like uh, young people out there to see you? In what light do you want them to see you in what you're advocating for? And also, if they want to support you, your mm. cause, uh, future going forward mm. how can they get ahead with it mm -hmm. i want you to speak to them in your camera right there okay all right. um all right thank you guys for watching this far 
Well, my advocacy is on mental health. And if we all can join hands and join me through my platform called Awaken Circles, if we all can rise up and share our stories, share our adversaries, what we have been able to overcome, then we can empower other people to also feel represented and know that they too can overcome whatever challenge they are going through. So I would love your support on that as a nation, as a continent, as our world. Let us not just voice the success that is going on. Let us voice the journey, where we come from, you know, and let us use that to empower other people to know that they too can. Nice. So please continue supporting me. I do outreaches in high schools and campuses and primary schools. And for that, there's a lot of financial constraint because I do it by myself. Nice. So if you are watching and you can sponsor such an activity and such an outreach to ensure that we I am a voice to other people that they also know they also can do it, then right. please feel free to reach out on my email. My email is awakenwithlinetkinya at gmail.com or, or also reach out to me through my social media handles. Instagram is official underscore linet underscore kinya. Right. And let's work together and make this world a better place. A better place, right. Unbelievable. So, so uh, they can purchase the book. We are out of time. They can purchase the book at where can they get the book? Oh, yes, right? yes, yes. Please email us also or DM me on Instagram and mm. we will have that figured out, yes. Right. Mm. So, so, thank you so much, Lynette. It has been a great conversation uh, chatting with you. And I know a lot of people have been watching are really inspired. Thank mm. you for coming through and you look good like you are, you are an, an SI unit of good looks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you right. so much for having me. Uh -huh. It was such an honor. Karibu sana. And thank you, by the way, for hanging out with us. You've come to the end at Brian Sakon on at Y254 Channel. I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early right here. Uh, see you tomorrow.